Hi there, I'm re-recording this, it's a list of predictions. I uh, wish you uh, a very uh, fun uh, 2012. You hear some of the fireworks that were going on uh, in my uh, city uh, yesterday. Uh, I made a list of, uh, of things that I think will happen in 2012 or will become more prominent. I'll shut down uh, the fireworks. And I'll just go through them. It's a long list so I have to be a little bit quick. First of all, I think they will be fighting over the Strait of Hormuz. Uh, uh, there's two scenarios. One is that uh, uh, the US will go, go all the way because it's the only option they have to keep uh, their system going. It's all or nothing. That's the problem with, uh, with, uh, with systems that are really on a high level of, uh, of organizational uh, dependency. So basically the US or depends on a high level of organization of flows of materials and, and resources through the world. Uh, and it all has to be, uh, it all has to work. And if it doesn't work, then the country will completely collapse. Will nothing will be left of it. Uh, it's now getting some of its oil from Canada, but it has to have the oil from the Middle East. And so, it has two options: one, you fight and you exist, uh, or two, you fight, you don't fight and you don't exist. Well, then, of course, the choice is very simple. You suggest to fight. So, uh, but it's not certain. It's not certain. So we'll see two scenarios, I think, in, in the Middle East, which is one thermonuclear war with Iran, which will be devastating for everybody, uh, uh, but will also uh, make uh, big countries like China and the US uh, uh, collapse, where the US thinks it will come out better, apparently. The other one is that there will be a stand down of the US uh, over the oil, and the US will uh, severely suffer uh, from the fact that it no longer has the oil supply it wants, because it's no longer in control of that whole process and simply the threat and the practice and, the, and, and what's going on in the Middle East shows that Iran uh, considers himself of itself uh, surrounded by, by other parties that are interested in, in, in its success in this, uh, in this challenge. So that's Europe uh, on the Greek side they are getting uh, oil from Iran uh, and, and of course Russia probably because they simply like the strategic uh, aspect of, of, of that country and China because they want to have uh, a US cut off of oil because they need that and, and Europe because uh, it's simply uh, closer to home. It's, they really don't want to have anything, any messing around in that area. It will be too devastating. And he, actually Israel as well. Israel simply will say, well, okay, uh, yes, uh, well, we don't really want to be uh, annihilated here. And that's what will happen if, if, if the US starts fighting. So US, please fuck off and, and go die in the mud. That's not what I want the US to do, but, you know, so that will be a stand down. That's two options. First, that's the first one. So either a devastating war or a stand down, and which will be very bad for the US. Which will actually, uh, I think the last option, will, s will still uh, implement uh, Peter Schiff's uh, idea of a separation uh, between uh, China and the US and those economies. And that's, I think, a, st a very, still very viable theory. It's simply Max Carson doesn't believe it. Um, I don't think uh, that's, that's, uh, that, that's, hope, that's wishful. That's wishful thinking. But uh, the, the second one, let's say then the second one, we lumped these two together, is that there will be political assassinations on a visible level uh, around the world. And for several reasons. One is that uh, the corruption will be to such a level uh, that the people that do the talking no longer have any power uh, through their network to keep their positions. They're basically replaceable, and as they're replaceable, they can be assassinated uh, to uh, by by the parties involved. Uh, but there's another reason also, and that is that uh, it becomes the cheapest option. So if you're a pharmaceutical company A and there's pharmaceutical company B. And your political, uh, well, the political talking head is for a pharmaceutical company B, and your A, then you say, well, okay, we can give him uh, billions and billions for his campaign, we can also simply assassinate him. And a third reason is that, uh, that, there, that the, the, uh, the basically the structure of security is unwinding uh, because the costs become too high in the current environment. So basically the world becomes less secure. And I'm not talking about homeland security, but simply about the relationship and, and the knowledge that people have of their network. And I think the whole financial crisis is already a demonstration of a, of a system where nobody uh, has oversight anymore. Uh, and nobody really uh, has control anymore. Uh, and uh, as a result, things go run out of hand. 
And of course, corruption leads to increasing criminalization. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and people will want to make money, so they will spread weapons where they are not supposed to be. And, and, and people will be opportunists, and, and this will simply be the simplest, simplest option. So it's, it's, it's three, three factors. One is replaceability of political heads. Second is uh, the cost factor. And the third is that the control will be too expensive to, uh, to maintain security. And then there's a fourth one, and that's that people will start investing in, in political figures and um, be able to make a profit if people uh, are, are removed from the, from the, from the theater let's say, uh, just like people that own other people's life insurance. You know, then it becomes attractive to, to try to, uh, you know, try to get those people to die. And that's in, the, that's in the U.S., it's not in Holland, but in the U.S. you can own life insurance of somebody else. And then you can get a payout when he dies or she. Um, okay, well, there's a lot of them, so number four is then the unwinding of climate action organizations. I think that a number of climate action organizations will be deemed uh, too expensive uh, uh, for the supporting oil companies. Uh, they have been a nice facade, a nice distraction, a nice way to keep people busy and wasting money and time uh, while they should be focusing on doing something real uh, against climate change, which they didn't because they thought they were uh, part of a big group, social group. Uh, and they were achieving something. You're, if, you're not, if you're jumping up and down on the beach, you're not achieving anything. You have to kick the balls of the people that you don't like to do what they're doing. That's what you do. So being nice is no way to achieve anything. Basically. <laughs> and the only way to, to, to be social and nice uh, when you want to achieve something is to do it yourself. Otherwise you have to ask somebody else and then, you know, this world doesn't work uh, in such a way that, that asking for action results in anything because people don't do what they're doing because they're going to change their mind once they're asked by something what are you like completely useless to protest you have to force people to do things in my opinion and as a result they will simply say okay well it's too expensive we're we're bankrupt we'll stop we'll know and everybody will think oh they're bankrupt well then it was useless let's stop and, and maybe a lot of people will follow their the, the example of the stopping a climate action organization and simply go back to barbecuing and driving the SUVs. You know, that says, but then you're a hopeless person if you like that. You should realize and keep realizing that there's only one option for the future, and that's a renewable future. Otherwise, there isn't a future. Um, okay, number five, Rothschild won't get his coal. Nathan de Rothschild was trying to get control over all the coal in the world uh, as he had the opportunity with the whole credit boom. Uh, he bought uh, uh, rights to the coal of Indonesia, which is a massive reserve, but I don't think he'll get it. First, it's disputed. Second, it's too close to the, to the Asian countries and they all hate the guts of Rothschild. So, uh, so he won't get it. And, and But it is a nice demonstration of the carbon credit system in action because he can of course print all the money in the world if he's going to deliver the coal himself, that he owns himself for that money. And you have a carbon credit system which keeps a product, productive system uh, uh, busy, just like our oil companies do. Uh, of course, um, um, let's say, I have to select a few, I'll, I'll put the list below this video because I want to keep it under 15 minutes because otherwise... It, it's just too boring or too long, I don't know. There will be now uh, probably a number of lethal viruses that pop up. Uh, why? Because it's a Dutch guy was stupid enough to tell the world that it's easy to make very, very lethal viruses based on H1, uh, H1N1 uh, uh, virus. And they're now even contemplating of publishing how he did it. I mean, you must be completely out of this world if you think that, that you can publish something in a scientific paper. Uh, that can kill half of the world population. Uh, and then sit at your desk and go like, hmm, should I do that? Hmm, maybe, maybe it's not a good idea. But that's, that's, that's the nice thing about information technology. Somebody can do that. Uh, uh, somebody can publish any type of information. And if, if it's uh, powerful information, so stuff that really can change something, then it's very easy to achieve, achieve major change in the world. Uh, sadly, in this case, it would uh, maybe inspire some people with a big book of uh, molecular biology or whatever, and a few uh, vials uh, and, 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 and glass petri dishes in his uh, backyard to start making a flu virus that kills uh, almost everybody. So then uh, you're a moron if you're even contemplating publishing that type of information. Um, 
I, I think that just to keep it short, there's two options in the world. One is that you keep myopic uh, vision of the of the carbon resources, uh, uh, which uh, control uh, your your military power, and you try to use the combination of whatever you have in order to keep uh, your society going in the carbon uh, consumptive way. And for some areas of the world that's easy, for others it's not that easy, but the fact is that everybody tries to do the same thing. And so there will be lots of fighting and that will be very wasteful. And, and organizing society in, in giving people more and more virtual stuff instead of real stuff, which is of course much cheaper. I mean, imagine that computers ran on solar energy and your computer also and the whole internet did and you would be playing Farmville all the, t all the day and you would simply not want to leave that, that your, your, your laptop then it would be an extreme cheap society because you only have to uh, kind of fill the supermarkets with some food and, uh, and, and, and the rest of the world, you know, everybody will sitting, be sitting inside behind their screen uh, playing that game and, uh, and, and, and that will be it now if it's run on renewables it wouldn't have any cost so nobody would have to toil or work or anything if it, but it's not, because of that system only exists in the minds of people that want to use carbon energy. So you get the Gulag Casino state that, that Max Kaiser talks about, uh, with penitentiary uh, uh, institutions uh, where you are put to work to, to be really productive. Because that's, so you don't own anything, and if you're productive, then you're, you're basically a forced labor. That's one option. And the world will be under tension of fighting and it will be a, a constant battle and and simply in order to keep the potency of the militaries uh, areas will have to be impoverished because they you know if you have an enemy and your army is weak then you have to weaken the enemy and uh, that and uh, even if it's not an enemy yet if it's a friend yet uh, then you can still weaken it so that you remain stronger that's the whole strategy there's two sides to to, to being powerful, one is to be powerful yourself, and the other one is to weaken your enemy. And that weakening will simply mean an impoverishment of the whole world. Until the oil is run out and then there's no solution, because nobody, uh, everybody has been uh, completely, uh, society has been completely uh, uh, cleared and sweeped of any uh, real inside knowledge, everybody's become a moron. Uh, and is eating the biggest crap, and is all genetically modified, and is either in, uh, either sitting clicking behind a, a computer trying to live uh, some kind of modern life, or is in some kind of uh, penitentiary, uh, or, or, poor, or is poor and, and destitute and left to its own device without any insurance whatsoever, any protection. So that's one. That's the one option. That's the, the carbon credit casino gulag uh, society. Uh, with a shrinking, which is actually, uh, which involves a shrinking number of people because a larger number of people will simply be poor and too weak to, to assert themselves. Uh, the other option is that uh, from a top down level, militaries will recognize that this is not going to be uh, a very nice experience uh, and it's going to result in the destruction of our ecosystem, uh, destruction of life on Earth. They know it, they, they very, very clearly know it. I've, been, I've seen several reports that, 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 that explain that the military in the US and around the world, they all know exactly what's going on. And then of course you have water resources and you have simply food production will be that will be collapsing in some areas because of drought and, and changing weather patterns. So basically the population that was sustained there for the cost that was, that was uh, costing there simply won't happen anymore. So the military has an option because it's the military, it has big guns. And, uh, and what you see then is that there will be a global peace treaty, uh, a global stand down of armies, and there will be uh, some kind of shift in the in the way that people can protect themselves. And that's uh, um, and basically the key will be that there will be no big armies anymore. Uh, it sounds very puzzling. To achieve that, you have to be very very strong. Uh, and you have to be very, very secure of your of your power. Uh, so it doesn't really counter that uh, theory if you see a build up of military power uh, or more money to going to the military. That doesn't mean that it simply means that government shifts to the military. Military will uh, stand down and, and 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 start organizing society in a way that uh, that basically makes it stronger. Uh, and well. It's a complex story, but the energy that otherwise would be wasted uh, uh, in even the, the possibility of a, of a, a true military uh, attack or, or counterattack 
uh, will not be wasted there and will not be invested there and will be used in order to uh, make local uh, local energy production, local renewable production. It sounds really utopic, but it is uh, completely possible. And, the, and, and one reason to believe that this is the way it will go is that we haven't had war, a real war in the West for a long time. And the only, re of course, there was it was very easy to do it, and we had the Cold War, and we had the build-off of power and stuff. But nobody ever knew really how much power somebody else had, and nobody really wanted to use those weapons ever. And 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 what was interesting is that uh, the the driving force behind that, and that's I think one of the things that Reagan proves, is that if you have enough energy, if you simply if you forget about the climate, which he, what he did, and which was his kind of his crucial uh, and, and most devastating uh, mistake in his life and for the world, but uh, then people want to have fun. They're, they have become more benign in the last century uh, as a whole, as a, as a human race, and they simply want to have wealth and interaction and social stuff. And, uh, and that, that's basically been proven in the last 30 years. So you can say that if you abandon armies, if you, if you reduce them, and if you have a system to control resources, and you have a source of resources which is uh, based on renewable energy, so it's unlimited, and you organize that amongst each other around the world, uh, then uh, so it has, it's not even a high level of organization, but it simply has to be a mutual understanding that, that, that people in the streets are no longer the type of people that will, will go into a fist fight as long as you do things right. If you make sure that they're fed well and they're not getting cold and all that stuff and they get some education and they get something to occupy their lives with then they won't they won't do anything and it doesn't have to be a, a, a kind of clamp down of a of a small elite anymore see and if that if that understanding uh, it's already there uh, and it's already a nuisance to uh, to people in the military as I read uh, and it becomes a nuisance on, on every level uh, that's one of my other predictions is that every level of authority in the world will be going to uh, promote renewables simply because that is the and that's the second option that's the that's the, not the carbon credit casino gulag option but it's the it's the renewable robo economic option as i call it and uh, those are the two options and i think we'll see more uh, the more support you see for renewables on every level clear support uh, which definitely i think uh, makes people change their mind and makes them put an effort in, into renewables. So you might say bleed yourself to death to have a BMW, but then you'll bleed yourself to death to have a good renewable power system. And you'll power your own country and your world and your, or your, your nation. Uh, so th that, second, that second trend I think will become stronger. And it's the most positive thing that can happen. Uh, but it's also the, the smartest thing. That, that countries and nations can do, but the, what's necessary for that is a high level of, uh, of, uh, or is a high high level understanding of what the situ situation actually is, and there's a mutual enemy which is uh, basically uh, destruction of of mankind through uh, the changes that are occurring uh, through the carbon emissions. So then uh, the the way forward becomes clear. I think in 2012 it will become more clear. That that is uh, that is uh, that is understood, and the people that are actually able to make the decision will uh, talk more about it. Anyway, this is way too long uh, as a video, but I hope you have a good 2012, and I'll put a link to my uh, predictions uh, below, and maybe I'll work uh, put some more detail in each of them. So uh, that's for a later mention. Thanks for listening.